Hey guys, Mako here. So recently, I knocked out a pretty big game from my bottomless pit. That is my goddamn video game collection. And that being, that game being SMT1. Specifically the Famicom version, Super Famicom version, sorry. Uh, and, man, I, I kind of just blasted through the entire thing. And I'm actually just on SMT2. Like, I'm halfway through SMT2. And I'm having a blast with that too. Arguably, it's got way more polish and it's more fun. Mostly due to the fact that there's an L button that lets you pull up the map. Now I'm not sure if that's something that the translation patch added or if it was in the base game. I assume it was in the base game by this point because other versions like the Mega CD version and the... Uh, uh, d -d 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 what am I thinking of? The PC Engine version. If that also had that by default, so I'm pretty sure by this point they would have had it in SMT2. Uh, uh, by default, but now I've never really made a video before, at least nothing like this. Uh, so, but I had a really good time. Like preface preface this by saying I had a really really good time with SMT1. Like I was not expecting to like it as much as I did, and honestly, I really just want to share my thoughts and opinions on the on the game uh, because. I, Whenever I hear anyone talk about SMT1, it's usually stuff along the lines of it aged poorly, it's kind of bad, it's the first of its kind, you know. And usually it comes from people who haven't even beaten the game or even got significantly into it. Um, and now me having beaten the entire thing, I feel like my opinion is a little more valid um, compared to those other people. But... Um, with the recent announcements of SMT3 and SMT5, uh, it made me really, really want to dive deeper into the series. Uh, deeper than what most, what most people usually play, aka Nocturne, SMT4, or even Rido or DDS. So, being hot off the heel, playing SMT1, what do I think about it? Well, man, the combat, combat is amazing as shit. Holy fuck. But, it's not bad. It's simple, and it's definitely grown exponentially since the first game. But, I feel like as, the, as a base, as a straight like base, Megaton base, it's pretty good. It's better than Kyuyaku. Kyuyaku was kind of shit. <laughs> nah, Kyuyaku wasn't shit. I mean, it, it, Kyuyaku wasn't as bad as Megami Tensei 1. Which I couldn't get through, I'm sorry. Like, that, that game has been... Oof, that game is fucking rough. But... Uh, yeah, the game isn't that hard. Or... Or easy. Like, it, it's kind of... It's kind of like a nice middle ground. Uh, at least for, for most of the game. <coughs> at least for most of the game. Because you kind of cruise through it. Um, for all, like, I'd say, after you get to Tokyo, like, after the, after the nukes, after the, uh, what, what the fuck was that place called? The, ethereal, the, the place you go to between the, between, uh, Thorman and the Apocalypse, you know, that little, like, Y area, um, I completely forgot what it's called, but, um, yeah, like after after that point, I think the game is smooth sailing. I think you're a high enough level to not really mind too much of the challenge from that point on. And if you're lost, there's nothing wrong with pulling up a guide, at least in my opinion, and just looking up next destination. Because it's honestly like I didn't even have to do that like after a certain point as well. Like I got to Shinjuku, finished a lot up all the all the tasks there. I got a little guide for like the starring area getting still getting used to the game to be fair at that point. But I've after going from Shinjuku like onwards, it's just it just became second nature to, for me to play the game. And um Yeah, from I think Shibuya onwards. No wait, it wasn't Shibuya. What was that place called? Uh Fuck. Um I should have really prepared more for this. But, 
after the place where you meet Alice for the first time, you know, you deal with Alice and Yuji fucking dies. <laughs> um, yeah, after that point, I'd say you don't really need to follow a guide. Maybe occasionally for um, little hints here and hit here and there, maybe for like alignment uh, advice or something. But even alignment wise, you don't really have to worry about it in the first game because your decisions don't really fucking matter. I mean, they do somewhat. I'd say if you want to go neutral, which I did, uh, you want to go with the routes that make you kill the most things, most bosses and stuff, like Yama. I'd say you want to kill Yama because he gives you such a stupid amount of XP, that would be stupid to not do it. <laughs> but, regardless of that, uh, I'm just going off on, 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 on tangents, I think. But yeah, uh, game, pretty, pretty easy for the most part. Uh, I know it's old and it takes a little to get used to, but once it once it clicks, it just it's just great. It's just fun. It's stupid fun. The demon negotiations pretty good. Like I'd say, demon negotiations in this game work better than in most others. <laughs> like Persona 5's demon negotiations bare as hell. It just it gives you two dialogue options and that's it. Whereas this, it feels like you have a little more control over it. Although it does, it is pretty reliant on your on your stats at some point. But like, again, after a certain point in the game, it's not really much of an issue. Um, so there's, there's that. Uh, what else do I want to mention? I actually do have some bullet points, but I'm not really following anything I wrote down. I'm just going off of, off of what's coming to my mind at the moment. Um, uh, yeah. And if, if you want to, like, after... I didn't know about this until, like, Shortly before you fight Yama, you can get a really good fucking sword uh, through a glitch in the game. So basically, if you go into a menu holding A, like... Okay, I'll explain how this works. So if you go into a menu, uh, a purchase menu, in a Gaia temple, and keep holding A, and back out of that menu, pressing B, but you're still holding that A button, you will get one of the most powerful weapons in the game. For free. How did that pass the QA? I don't know because it's, apparently it's in every ver like every uh, SNES version, like it, it's in the translation patch and it's in the base. So uh, yeah, that's pretty broken. And they did notice it for the later re-releases because I have a friend from uh, an Asian friend who uh, plays the other versions. I played the other versions, I mean, uh, and he told me that it's not in the other versions. He tried to do it on the Mega CD version, he tried to do it on the PC Engine version. Nope, doesn't work. It's only on the SNES version. Which, obviously, they met, that means they noticed. At least. Um, but yeah, if you want to make the game a little easier for you, then go ahead and do that. I mean, the game is pretty easy as is, honestly. like It's easy to get like very OP demons pretty early. And the, the grinding, uh, as, as much as I recommend you do it, after a certain point, it's not that required, as especially considering what I just said. The bosses give you a stupid amount of XP, and um, uh, regardless of the gameplay, and regardless of all that, the game is the game is a, a cakewalk in general. You don't really need a guide for it. Uh, only if you're lost, I recommend you use it. But other than that, I don't think you really need one. Uh, but about that story though. The story was, was what shocked me. I, I found it really, really good. Uh, I know for a SNES game, it's a SNES game, it's, you know, you don't expect too much from it, but man, it kind of blew my expectations. Uh, like, it's pretty, the scale of the entire story is pretty big. You go from, you know, being in your own neighborhood, going into, into your local mall, <laughs> to, uh, post-apocalypse, having, you know, uh, the president of the United States nuke your whole uh, country. That's always fun. Um, and, you know, chilling um, in that whole world uh, is pretty big scale, I'd say. And it just gets more wacky from there, to be honest. And I don't know, I just, I just vibed with everything really well. Um, I did play... Because here's the thing about me and Megami Tensei. I haven't played all of the games, but I've played a decent amount. I've played 
I've played through three. I've played through four. I've played now I've played through one. I've played through um, uh, Rider One, and I. I'm like halfway through a lot of games at the moment. Like to be fair, I, I got a lot of games in my collection, and uh, I'm pretty much halfway through like Digital Devil Saga One, uh, Soul Hackers. Uh, what else am I halfway through? Um, Devil Survivor Overclocked. I'm. I've taken on a lot of games at once because I I do that all the time. I don't know why, but um, what was I saying? And I have a fucking memory of a goldfish. Um, uh, but yeah, the story, story. Go back to the story. Compared to the, all the other games, that's what I was talking about. Compared to all the other games I mentioned, I feel like this has way more of a grander plot, and it's way more ambitious than all the other ones. Because all the other ones are kind of sequels or like spin-offs, and they aren't as. I mean, they're great. Don't get me wrong. I fucking love all these games. At least from what I've played so far. Uh, and obviously, I played all of Persona games. I've obviously uh, given. I feel like no Persona fan. Uh, I feel like no SMT fan. There's there's no SMT fan that hasn't played Persona. And me, being a stubborn asshole that I am, I played for all of Persona, every single game, uh, before moving on to SMT. And now I'm kind of clearing out that backlog. Uh, but uh, yeah. I feel like this game. I feel like I'm reiterating, like repeating myself, but um, it just gets so political with its alignments. Like I feel like it's like, it's like way more the all the situations that happen in the game like are very vital to like the overall plot of the game, and it's all like it all like builds up for a really really decent payoff at the end um because like you finally meet, like at the end you obviously have to fight your your friends uh, uh and uh, obviously the the chaos the chaos uh, final boss and the love final boss i forgot who who they are obviously you're not you're not fighting yahweh in this game obviously uh but um that's in smt2 from what i hear and i'm not there yet in smt2 either I'm, i said as i said i'm halfway through smt2 uh, but it feels very like heavy. Like the plot gets really heavy after a certain point. Like yeah, it kind of is always heavy because you know you start the game and your mom fucking dies. Uh, she gets eaten by a demon. But yeah, man, it's just all really, really good. And um, when your friend, uh, not friend, but the the girl that like is after you for the entire game, that is jealous of your like. Uh, female uh, hero a uh, party member but yeah that's that hits me hard like at the end because she like she she just wanted some of that some of that boy she just wanted some of that boy and she just couldn't get it um and i feel bad uh for her about that but or oh, like the i mean the law hero was kind of an idiot throughout the entire thing i, I kind of felt bad for for the chaos hero as well um because he, he kind of was your friend up until the very end. Pretty much, pretty much the entirety of the game. And, um... Yeah, I just kind of felt for, them, for the guy. Because he didn't want to fight you. Not at all. He was he wanted to find a middle ground and be friends with you. And, you know, work it out. But, obviously, they couldn't be. Whereas the law hero, I feel... I, I kind of feel bad for him because he had to die twice. <laughs> Like, fucking hell. Uh, and even at the end, he's like, Oh, was I man manipulated all along? Nah, I couldn't be. My ideals were right. Uh, damn you. Um, but yeah, the plot was really good. And I say, I'm not spoiling a lot of the major, major things that happen in the story. But, um... But yeah, I'd say play it yourself and find out for yourself how great this game actually really is. Because, man, I was not expecting to walk away from that game feeling as positive as I was. Because, as I said at the beginning, everyone who ever talks about it, talks about it in a negative light. Like, I remember watching a video, I'm not sure whose video it was, I think it was like Gnarly's or something. When he where he mentions that he's 
least favorite Mega Ten game is SMT1. And I'm like, huh, interesting. At that, at that point, I haven't played SMT1, so I'm like, oh, interesting. I wonder how actually true everything that he says is. So now I've beaten SMT1, and man, this is this is an amazing game, and I can't really, I can't even agree. Like, not at all. I'd say the worst Mega Ten game, like, overall, is probably still Persona Q. I really don't like Persona Q, and I and I consider Persona Mega Ten like I consider all that one, because um, it is. Um, but yeah, probably Persona Q. Um, I'm looking at my collection right now because here's the thing: my Megami Tensei collection is almost complete. Yeah, uh, and uh, I don't know. I haven't gone to Strange Journey yet. Maybe that'll be worse. I'm hearing a lot of mixed things about Strange Journey. Some people swear that by that game like i know larue he talks about that game all the time on youtube like he, he really likes that game specifically the soundtrack and like that's the number one thing that i'm already um disagreeing with him on because that game's soundtrack is far from good i really don't like it i'm sorry it just doesn't sound like a mega 10 game it just sounds like a generic orchestra and i can't really i do not jive with it at all uh, and i'm also hearing a lot about the game so ginormous dungeons um if they're bigger they are bigger than like the last dungeon of smt1 uh, that would be pretty annoying uh and from some of the screenshots that I, people sent me yeah it looks like that's the case so i'm a little wary of that game but yeah at the moment from what i've played and beat yeah that's persona Q. um anyways i just wanted to get this on my chest because man I really think more people should just play this, play this game, play the classic games before, you know, not before they play the newer ones. I feel like the newer ones are still better in terms of getting people into the franchise, and I'm really looking forward to, you know, SMT3 Remastered and SMT5, whenever we get that game. Uh, but, um, yeah, I mean, is there, is there anything else that I want to say? No, I think that's about it. So, yeah. Uh, I'm thinking of also doing one of these videos for uh, some other Mega Ten games that I'm planning to beat next. So obviously I'm working on SMT2. I'm halfway through that, and when I when I beat that, I think I'm gonna make a video talking about what I like about that game too. Uh, and I might do one on Rido because I beat that recently as well. So yeah, uh, let me know what you thought, guys. Um, I want to make more Mega Ten content and stuff like that, and in general get more into video video making, because I feel like there's just not enough of it in terms of Mega Ten, and now being more into the franchise than ever, I feel like I really want to want to expand that community at least a little bit, or at least to help it grow a little bit. So yeah, uh, if you guys have any comments or like feedback, uh, please do leave them down below. Uh, any likes or dislikes, I, all, I appreciate it all. Any sort of engagement is appreciated. Follow me on Twitter. That's also uh, something that to toot my own horn there, because I really, really spend too much time on Twitter. But uh, yeah, uh, thanks for watching all this, and uh, see you next time in whatever I make next. Hopefully that SMT2 video. Bye, guys.